Hey everybody, Charles for HumbleMechanic.com and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace your spark plugs. Alright, so we are going to be using my 98 GTI with VR6 engine, known as Project White Wookie, to do the demonstration on how to replace spark plugs. This car has a coil pack and spark plug wires, but even if you have a little bit different setup, you're going to be able to use these tips to replace spark plugs on any vehicle, well, any engine that has spark plugs. We're also going to be talking about a few terms in this video like coil on plug, coil near plug, and some other things. So what I really highly recommend is that you watch another video that I did that is all about spark plugs. I'll be sure to link it up in the video itself as well as down in the video notes so you can check that out. So if you have any questions about spark plugs, refer to that video because it'll probably answer them. Now, I'm gonna be using the OEM, OEM Volkswagen spark plugs. I found that these actually are one of the better spark plugs for the VR6 engine. Even though they're a little bit expensive, I think it's worth the extra money. Like I mentioned in that other video, there are about 17 different options at uh, a local auto parts store for spark plugs for this car. So I just went ahead and stuck with the OEM ones. Now, this is gonna be a little bit longer video, but I want you guys to make sure that you watch the entire video and really use these things that we're talking about today to replace your spark plugs. Understand that when we watch DIY videos, we're making an investment in our time to do two things. One, to learn a new skill. If you're watching a video on how to replace spark plugs, Odds are that this is either something you've only done once or twice or you've never done before. So we're investing our time to learn a skill. And two, which is really one of the reasons that draws people to DIYs, is that it's gonna save you a ton of money. So spend the 20 minutes or so, watch the video. If you have to watch it twice, totally cool. You know, rewind, fast forward, whatever you wanna do. Just make sure you try and get as much out of it as you can and learn how to replace your own spark plug because doing this yourself can easily save you north of a hundred bucks. All right, let's talk about some of the tools that we're gonna be using. We're gonna need a flat blade screwdriver. This is gonna help us put the spark plug wires back on, also to help aid in removing any trim clips or anything like that. We are also going to need a ratchet. We are going to need an extension as well as a spark plug socket. Remember, these are the kind of sockets that will hold the spark plug in place due to either a rubber gasket, compression fitting, or a spring clip. One of the most important things we're going to use in this job is going to be, you guessed it, a torque wrench. Proper torque on spark plugs is very important. In fact, this is one of the parts that I always, always, always make sure I put a torque wrench on. We're also going to be using some gloves. This is up to you, really, whether you wanna wear gloves or not. We're going to be using some dielectric grease. A tool to remove the spark plug wires. This is actually the tool that came with the GTI. It's a little bit worn out, which you will see in the video. And if needed, a different set of pliers to remove spark plug wires. All right, we are here at the GTI. The very first thing that we need to do is figure out where our spark plugs are at. On this car, it's really easy because our spark plug wires are bright blue, which allows us to locate them very quickly. Some cars, it's not gonna be so easy. We may have an engine cover that needs to come off, or perhaps they're buried down, maybe the sides of the engine, something a little bit different than this, which these are, again, prevalent right up front and very easy to locate. Typically on your four-cylinder engines, it's going to always be pretty easy because they're gonna be right on the top of the engine. If it's a transverse mount, it's a longitudinal mount, they'll be this way, but it's still gonna be really easy. On our V engines, that's where it may get a little bit more challenging because they may be down the sides of the engine, especially if it's a longitudinal engine. If it's a transverse engine like this one and a traditional V, not a VR6, we may have our spark plugs actually buried underneath the intake manifold. While these are kind of underneath the intake manifold, they're still accessible without removing it. You can see these holes right here allows us to gain access to our spark plugs without taking the intake manifold off. There's a lot of other cars that are not that way. So depending on what kind of vehicle you have, you may actually also have to take the intake manifold off. We also wanna make sure that we document the routing of our wires if we have spark plug wires. Coil on plug and coil near plug vehicles, it's not that big of a deal. But when we do have spark plug wires like this car, we wanna make sure that these get put exactly where they came from. Again, this one's gonna be really easy because there are actually tracks for each spark plug wire 
So we know when we're done, we need to put these wires right back in the tracks. The other really cool thing about this engine is it's actually labeled what cylinder they are right inside the track. So we know that this wire is cylinder two because it says two all down the track. So this one would be two, four, and then six, and then one, three, and five. But truthfully, we really don't need to identify the cylinders specifically. We don't need to know that this is cylinder two and this is cylinder four in order to replace the spark plugs. If we run into an issue, we're gonna need to know which is which, but just for basic maintenance, really doesn't matter which cylinder is which, especially if we do a good job of documenting our spark plug location before we start. So this is a case where your cell phone and you just snap a picture and then you'll have that documentation and we can compare that when we're done. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is remove the spark plug wire from the spark plug. You notice that I already went ahead and pulled the wire off, but it's still held on to the spark plug pretty well. I can give this a bit of a tug and you can see that the spark plug's not coming out. Now, if you drive an older Volkswagen like this one, from the factory, they actually came with a special tool that hooked into the spark plug wire for removing the plug wires. But in today's world, you know, this car is almost 20 years old and this is the latest generation that I think came with the special tool. The odds of you having this tool are pretty slim, so we're gonna have to do this a little bit different way. Volkswagen does make a special tool to remove these spark plug wires. To be honest, it works a heck of a lot better than this one that came with it. Plus, this one's pretty worn out. These are just plastic. The Volkswagen special tool is metal. But if we don't have that tool, that's not really that big of a deal. We have a couple other options. A pair of pliers meant to remove spark plug wires it works just fine. There's also ones that are rubber coated along the ends, so that way we don't mess up the spark plug wire. But honestly, even with a pair of straight nose pliers, if we're really, really careful, we can take all of these plug wires out without damaging them. But since we have a special tool, we're gonna go ahead and try and do that first. You can see here how the special tool hooked that little landing piece on the spark plug wire, and that allowed us to pull the spark plug wire right up. If we don't have this tool and we have to use a pair of pliers, we want to be really careful not to grab the rubber part and squeeze as hard as we can. Basically what we want to do is just apply light pressure and sort of twist the spark plug wire out as we pull very gently. We don't want to just grab it and rip it because odds are we're going to rip the spark plug wire in half. We also want to be really careful if we grab this on the metal portion because again we don't want to just grab the spark plug wire and give it a good squeeze and crush the metal piece. So now that we got this spark plug wire out, I'm going to go ahead and lay it to the side. This is going to be really easy to keep track of because remember they all have channels. So I'm just going to go ahead and lay it back there. And don't worry, this is a cold engine. Now we have a choice to make. Do we want to do one spark plug at a time? Or do we want to take all the wires off and then do all the spark plugs and then put it all back together? If you've done it a million times, do it whatever way makes you happy. At the dealership, what I would have done is I would have pulled all these wires off, thrown the top ones over this way, thrown the bottom ones down to the bottom or towards the front of the engine, did all my spark plugs, and then put them all back in. But if you've never done spark plugs before or you've never done them on the engine you're working on, it's really not a bad idea to just go ahead and do one at a time. Now, before we take the spark plug out, we're gonna need to do some inspections. We wanna take a look down inside the spark plug well. And we wanna look for any oil, any dirt, any debris. You can see there's a little bit of oil down in the spark plug well. We wanna make sure that when we remove the spark plug, none of that stuff falls down in the cylinder. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can hit it with a little bit of brake clean and then blow that out, or we can try and just blow it out. Perfect situation, we would have shop air or an air compressor to blow that out. If you don't, something that works pretty well is the stuff they use to clean computer stuff, computer keyboards and whatnot. It works pretty good, not as good as shop air though. We're gonna give that a cleaning. try and get as much junk of that out as we can. Again, we don't want that going down in the cylinder. Next, we're gonna get our specialty spark plug socket. Remember, this has a way inside the spark plug socket 
to hold the plug when we remove it. If we use just a regular plug, it might work okay, but our odds of dropping the spark plug out of the end of the socket go way, way up. And we go ahead and remove the spark plug. Now I've mentioned it before, it's mostly a good idea to do this on a cold engine. There are some cases where doing it on a cold engine is not the best way to do it, but about 95% of the time, cold engine is gonna be the best way to go. Once we get our spark plug out, we can take a quick look at it and see its condition. See the end of this one's pretty grubby. So it's definitely time for a spark plug change. Now, if we're doing one at a time, we're gonna go ahead and put the new spark plug in. If your spark plugs do not come pre-gapped, you're going to need to gap the spark plug properly. That really depends on engine. You can, when you buy the spark plug at the auto parts store, you can ask them what the gap is supposed to be. If you have access to an online repair manual, it should be in there. If you have your vehicle's repair manual, it'll definitely be in there as well. Luckily for us, or luckily for me anyway, the spark plug that we're gonna put in does come pre-gapped. With a lot of things, I generally like to start stuff by hand. So what I do when I do spark plugs is I take my socket, I put my new plug in it. Remember, we've cleaned out the spark plug well, and I like to start them all by hand. You know, I mentioned checking that spark plug well for any debris or oil. If you see oil in the spark plug well, let's say the spark plug is half buried with oil, you need to make sure that you're doing a good visual inspection because perhaps we have something like a valve cover gasket leaking or something like that, depending on how the spark plugs are sealed. That little bit of oil in this spark plug well did come from a leaking valve cover on this car. So once I got this all the way in, you know, just hand tight, that's when it's time to break out the torque wrench and give them a torque. So if we're gonna do one at a time, go ahead and torque this one. I'm gonna actually just go ahead and do the rest of them and then torque them all at one time. We also wanna be careful when we're removing spark plug wires from any kind of channel. We don't just wanna rip them off because we run the risk of damaging the wires. Something to keep in mind if you're dealing with aftermarket spark plug wires, which these are, that's not a problem and most of them are really good. The only thing that's a little bit different is gonna be the length of the wire. On this top bank, for example, you may get wires that are a little bit closer in length. Generally, they're a little bit longer when you deal with aftermarket wires. So we need to be careful and make sure that we're paying really close attention to which wire goes where. All right, let's go ahead and remove the rest of these spark plugs. Now you notice that when I did number two, I had a little bit of a struggle with. This one was barely tight. Now I'd actually had number two out for a different project that I did on the GTI when we did the throttle body treatment test. So it was torqued properly. This one definitely wasn't. You can actually see there is a little bit of oil on the end of that spark plug. We also want to make sure that we do a good visual inspection inside each of the spark plug wells. And look, we can generally see the tops of the pistons, so we want to make sure that we don't have any issues. All right, now that we got all our spark plugs out, if we didn't find any issues, it's time to go ahead and put the rest of the plugs back in. Remember, we already put cylinder two spark plug in, so again, we're going to load up our spark plug in our socket, and we're just going to start replacing them. If you run into any issues going back together, let's say you're doing this by hand and the plug doesn't want to go back in, it's giving you a significant amount of resistance, go ahead and pull it back out and do a really good visual inspection. Make sure that your threads are clean on both the spark plug as well as in the cylinder head. All right, now that we have our spark plugs installed hand tight, it's time to go ahead and torque them down. If you're not sure of what the torque spec of your spark plugs are, it's a really good idea to ask at the parts store because they might actually have that information for you. All right, so got my torque wrench set, got my socket and extension. We're gonna go ahead and torque down our spark plugs. 
Remember, we just hand tightened them first. I'll start to feel tension on the torque wrench. And then as I rotate it, when, you, when it gets to the proper torque, the wrench will actually click. Normally I do a double click to make sure that it's properly torqued. We move on to the next set of plugs. No need to really go fast here when you're torquing things down. Just take it nice and easy. Remember this torque is important. One thing about using a torque wrench is normally I like to hold it as high up. You'll notice there's a ridge right here. I like to hold it as high up towards that ridge as I possibly can. It's not so much a big deal on the click style torque wrenches, but on the battery powered torque wrench, if you're holding it down here, that can actually tweak the back end of the body of the torque wrench and cause it to not be accurate. I know one of my other torque wrenches, if I hold it down here, it'll actually make the torque wrench turn off because it pulls the cap just a little bit. So I like to grip it kind of just like this as high up as I can. It's a little bit of torque wrench 101 for you guys. Now this is one of the trickier engines to do spark plugs, at least for the Volkswagen side, because the plugs are buried pretty far deep. All right, we got all of our spark plugs torqued down. What you wanna do is roll your torque wrench back down to zero. Uh, if you're not 100% sure that you got all of your spark plugs properly torqued, take two minutes and go back and just make sure that they're torqued. Sometimes on the four cylinder ones where the spark plugs are all straight in a row, I'll just go back and click them again just to make 100% sure. It's a little OCD thing that I have. But again, if you're 100% sure you got them already done, there's really no need to do that. Now, next step is we gotta put everything back together. So if you've removed any covers or anything like that, it's time to get those ready. All we're gonna really have to do is go back and put all of our spark plug wires back in the right spots. Now, I mentioned before, because of the directioning of this particular engine, this is super easy to do. We're just gonna go ahead and lay our spark plug wires right in their respective locations. This one has the guides, so it makes it really easy to get them back where they belong. Now, before clipping the spark plug wire, into the spark plug, just to give you an idea of what's going on inside the cylinder, this is basically the goal that we have, to have the spark plug with the wire fully seated on it. What we can do is we can also drop a little bit of dielectric grease inside the spark plug wire. That'll help make better contact as well as keep dirt and moisture out. A lot of times it also makes it easier to get the spark plug wire back off. For this particular one, when we're dealing with wires, again, we wanna make sure that the wire's fully seated on the spark plug. All right, so we have our Volkswagen tool. We can also use this to install spark plug wires. We're gonna put the tool on the wire, then we're gonna get it down in the cylinder, give it a good pop, and it should leave the spark plug wire on the spark plug. But you'll notice it didn't, it came out with the tool. That's because this tool is pretty well worn out by now. So we're gonna take a little bit different approach. If you have coil on plug, this is not gonna be an issue. You're just gonna set the coil on, give it a smack, and that'll properly set the coil. See our spark plug down in our well here. And what I'll do is I'll take a flat blade screwdriver and just set it on the lip of the plug wire and give the screwdriver a tap. And what that basically looks like, so if here's our wire, I'm gonna get the screwdriver about right here and give it a tap. You don't wanna get it on the rubber portion and you don't wanna hit it so hard that it drives it through this soft metal. You just wanna get it right on the lip, either like right here or right here if you can and just give it a bit of a tap. So I did that on this spark plug wire and give it a little tug. You don't need to rip it out, just make sure that it's properly seated. So we're gonna go ahead and do that for the rest of our spark plugs.
Now that we have all of our wires properly installed on the spark plugs, it's time to go ahead and lay our wires back in the channels. A quick tip, you can spray this maybe with a little bit of soapy water. That'll help lock them down in the channels a little bit easier. We don't want to really force them in there because these plastic tabs can actually split the wire open just a little bit. And of course, we don't want to do that. I'm just going to go ahead. These have been off a million times <laughs> uh, here lately, so I'm not too worried about splitting them. If you don't have this kind of channeling, um, you just want to make sure that you put your spark plug wires back where they came from. You want to make sure that they're laid the same way and not laying and not rubbing like the exhaust or you know close to any kind of moving part or anything like that. We wouldn't want to do damage to our spark plug wire after we just spent all this time and energy putting in fresh spark plugs. All right, there we have it. All of our spark plugs have been replaced and properly torqued. Before you start the car, you're going to want to do a sweep of under the hood. Make sure you grab all of your tools out from underneath there. Make sure that there's nothing laying on the engine. Make sure there's nothing laying on the cowl area here. Make sure everything's cleaned up before you start your vehicle. Also make sure all of your connectors are plugged in. You don't have any loose connections or anything like that. That'll make your car not start. All right, so we are also inside the garage, so I'm not gonna go ahead and start the car now. If you're working in your garage, make sure you open the door up before you start your car. You don't wanna do anything foolish and hurt yourself or worse. When you do start your car, you wanna make sure that it runs properly. If you fire your car up and it's running really, really poorly, you need to immediately shut it off and make sure that you got everything put back together right. If we took a picture before we started and we can take that and compare, make sure you got all your plug wires in the same spot where they came from and where they belong. If you do get two spark plugs wires switched around, it's not that big of a deal to fix, but you're gonna need to fix it, otherwise you're causing a misfire on no less than two cylinders. But if you followed the steps that I just gave you, followed the tips, did everything properly, torqued your spark plugs properly, then you're gonna be good to go. Remember things like dielectric grease are optional. I like to use it on cars with spark plug wires, but I don't generally use it on coil over plug. Uh, same thing kind of with anti-seize. I don't use anti-seize when I do spark plugs. I never have, and I don't want to say that I never will, I just never have. There are applications that do request using an anti-seize. A lot of times it's a copper-based anti-seize, but if your vehicle doesn't say use a certain anti-seize, then don't use anti-seize. People seem to get really excited to use anti-seize and it gets everywhere. You wanna make sure that you're not getting it on anything that is going to cause like a poor electrical connection or a poor spark. We don't wanna get anything on the tip of the spark plug either. So make sure that you, if you use anti-seize, you are doing it based on the manufacturer recommendation. And remember that it's not always critical to use. Again, I don't ever use anti-seize when I do spark plugs on any vehicle. All right, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up there. If you have any questions or comments, post it in the comments section below. Hey, if you like the video, throw it a thumbs up on YouTube. I always appreciate that. You can also subscribe on YouTube or on the blog at humblemechanic.com. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the blog, and obviously right here on YouTube. All right, guys, hey, I hope that your spark plug job went really well. I hope your car's running a lot better maybe than it used to. Again, if you have any questions or comments, throw it down in the comments section below. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.